What is up? It is time to mock it like it's hot. It is still dynasty season, but rather than doing another startup, we're going to go into a rookie draft. And because I like to make things a little bit different and some would say a little bit more boring, it's going to be a one QB rookie draft because I want to see how that shakes out. The draft room is full. People are waiting to draft. Let's get into it. Good morning and welcome to Mock It Like It's Hot Club Fantasy Weeks Mock Draft Show. I am your host, Ryan Weiss, and it is time to keep the mocking going with me as always, Austin Amandolia. Austin, you were telling me before the show, you're just now learning the rookies. Everybody who knows me knows I don't know the rookies. So who better to host a rookie mock draft than me and you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was There was a hot second where it was going to be just the two of us, and I thought, you know, we might just need to talk about the news. Like, what yeah. else has been going on? The last little bit of free agency. All free agency news is all, all the time for the rookie draft. We're not even going to mention the rookies. But thankfully, our savior, the host of Dynasty After Party for Club Fantasy, Joel Worth, jumps in at the last second to join us because I slacked on getting a guest. Not that Joel is like a backup guest, but usually I try to get people outside of Club Fantasy. But here's the thing. If you want someone to talk rookies, we needed Joel here on this show. So, Joel, thank you, first and foremost. But go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I think... According to my wife, I am the backup guest du jour. Oh. But, uh, yeah, uh, Joel Worth, at the Joel Worth on Twitter. Uh, you can find myself and the esteemed Michael Sicoli on the Dynasty After Party Sunday mornings at this time. And we'll be doing uh, a Superflex mock draft tomorrow for science. We're going to compare the pre-draft and post-draft. We're going to do a rookie mock before the draft and right after the draft and kind of compare see how much draft capital affects the landing spot. Or affects Love it. And we'll have, uh, Joel, we'll have you drop that link in so we can just get some of the people from yeah, today's show sure. on with you guys tomorrow's show. So Joel will drop that in the comments here in a little bit. Let's get the draft board up, guys. It is a four-round, 12-team rookie draft. One quarterback this time around. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. And then I'm also going to mention I am actually in the draft this week. I took the 12 spot. Uh, we have, what do we see? We have Joel at the five spot, Austin at the three spot. In fact, let me go ahead and just list off our drafters. All these people who are nice enough to join us this morning. Is it Buell okay? Shia LaBeouf, uh, celebrity drafting with us. Austin at the three spot, Jacob Lundy at the four, Joel at the five, Maverick at the six, Canton's Finest, a friend of mine at the seven, Run 13 at the eight, Say what again, someone who uh, has been doing a lot of drafts himself, one nine. Uh, Matt DeVito, 110. Gator Raiders, who's been with us, I think, every single show so far at 111. And of course, me, the Fantasy Five, at the 112. And I want to get uh, started with a little controversy, Joel. You took shots at me yesterday without realizing you took shots at me when you said, I want to do a super flex for our draft because it's more interesting, implying that my one QB rookie draft is less interesting. But uh, I know that's not exactly it, but I want to do a one QB because everything I've seen so far has been super flex and there's still one QB leagues out there. I'm in a ton of one QB leagues. So Joel, why is you, do you think one QB should just be rendered obsolete? Are you, are you league shaming here? I am not. No. Uh, I, I just think the drafts are more interesting, right? Because the quarterbacks just in a one QB league, like Kayla Williams has value in a, in a rookie draft, but really the other guys don't. Like, yeah. Um, like you, we were talking about before it's probably going to drop down to Jaden Daniels who probably has some upside. Uh, but you know, like Drake may really isn't interesting in, uh, in a, a rookie mock in a one QB, just because he's really, he just doesn't have kind of the upside to become, you know, a top tier quarterback. So yeah, it, it's like, I, I play in plenty of single QB leagues myself, right? I'm in a bunch of leagues and a, there's, I'm in a bunch of one QB leagues. So yeah, there's no, there's no league shaming at all. It's just the, the rookie drafts are much more interesting when you when you the quarterbacks have value. Yeah, it's the reason I agree in in general they are more interesting. But for those of us who do still play in one QB leagues, seeing where these QBs go is also interesting. Uh, Austin, what's your take on Superflex versus one QB? I want to throw out an old take of mine before you answer, Austin. I thought in a ten team it needs to be super flex. Like their quarterbacks are worthless in a 10 team. If you're not playing super flex, anything larger than a 10 team, you can convince me one way or the other, but at 10, you gotta be playing super flex, a 10 team, one QB. I'm going to league shame you at that point. You're boring. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. I do think the league size really determines whether or not to go super flex. 
when it gets to 16 team leagues, I'm like, I need to be done with the super flex. I do not <laughs> need to risk starting like whoever the 32nd best quarterback in the league is, which I guess yeah. at this point, like, I don't, I don't, even, I can't name it. Off it it used head, to be easy like, to say Mac Jones, but now we have to say somebody else. Well, I was going to say <laughs> Zach Wilson. So last year, that's what would have been my pick, but you know, now we got to, when he was a starter, I don't year. think he was 32, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm there. I mean, I'm, I like all fantasy football leagues. So I'm good either way. Superflex, I think, is good for that, like, 10. If you're 10 or less, I do think it's nice to have a little bit more quarterback depth. Um, I used to be, like, a two QB truther to, like, force leagues to have to do two quarterbacks in those smaller settings. But then the waivers got all not fun. Like, uh. stashed a bunch of quarterbacks, and it meant that, you know, you ended up having to decide whether or not to play a random backup. So I'm now back into the, you know, it's it's cool to just make it a super flex. Can't. Oh, I'm with it. Uh, guys, just a couple of quick reminders. If you are new to Mock It Like It's Hot, first and foremost, welcome. Secondly, why don't you go over to YouTube and go ahead and subscribe because it helps Club Fantasy and it costs you absolutely nothing. We would very much appreciate it. Um, at the end of this draft, Austin and Joel will both recap their, their drafts, uh, basically just talking about the players they were able to land at the positions if they thought it was great value, if they thought it was just a, a weird draft in general. Um, sometimes on a rookie draft, I will pick the oops of the draft. Other times I won't. Without knowing full rosters, it's hard to really call an oops. But if there's a really bad mistake, we will call you out on it. It's all love. It's all about helping everybody else get better. That's the point of these mock drafts. We do not rate and review every team. If you're here for that, I'm sorry. Um, as you're leaving, if you could hit subscribe, we'd appreciate it. But on your way out. <laughs> but no, we're, we're not going to rate every team. These are all about learning. It's all about looking for trends and and things to really help you get better for when your real drafts end up coming. So that's just, you know, the, the you got 10 seconds, right? Oh, I have my queue set up. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on auto pick right now. And that way you guys don't have to wait on me for the rest. of the draft. So they will pick for me based on my own queue. Oh, and I snaked it. Joel, you're usually the one who catches that for me. So I screwed that up. Wow. This is going to be absolutely <laughs> insane for a rookie draft, but guess what? It just matters where the players go. We'll have to remember exactly. the snake. My bad, y'all. Um, I guess I better get in the draft chat. But before I get into the draft chat, Joel, I'm going to ask you a question. When is too early for rookie drafts? Obviously, for mock drafting, it's good to see, you know, what happens before the NFL draft, after the NFL draft. Do you play in any leagues? And would it just be, you know, sacrilegious to have your rookie draft before the actual NFL draft? Um, I, I guess I don't like it because you end up with something like what happened – was it two years ago when Malik Willis was going like in the first, <laughs> in the first round uh, of rookie drafts and didn't work out and just didn't get the draft capital and yeah. obviously hasn't paid off. So yeah, that's kind of the risk you take with taking, having your rookie draft before the actual NFL draft is things could go really, really badly for you with just one pick. So uh, I would, I prefer to have it after the draft. Um, like if you want to have it the day after the draft, that Monday after, that's fine. Uh, but I, I think you need the landing spot and you want to see the the draft capital. Yeah, and that, that's kind of where I've always stood. And, and Austin, before I kick it over to you, I'll, I'll bring up a question that I, I was going to ask these guys about, but then I decided not to because he's not a very popular player yet. But two players that I currently have ranked in my rookie ranking, so I still need to learn a little bit about, are um, – Ryan Flournoy, and then I can't even remember the other guys in the last name, but he's like a hyphenated wide receiver, like super long-ass last name. These guys aren't even available in Sleeper's draft pool right now. So literally, these are guys who, if you draft before the draft, they may end up being a fourth-round pick, and they're not even in the pool for players to be taken. So Austin, can you give any good reason to draft? Certainly not this early, but before the NFL draft. And, and... Wait, is no. it... Oh my God. Josh just told me it's still third round reversal from last week as well. So I am just winning out here. <laughs> my awesome. bad y'all go ahead. Nailed it, Ryan. Uh, I mean, I think that there is the kind of a case to do it this early just because it kind of makes it more fun. you have to actually like pay attention to the players and care about them. So I, I don't mind drafting before the, before the actual draft happens. Uh, I, everybody knows I do a lot of best ball and underdog does the rookies and sophomores drafts starting before the draft. I think it's a super fun way to go is to be able to just pick like, these are the best players I think are out there based off of their college tape and you know, whatever happens, happens. There's, there's kind of a fun, fun element to that, a fun uh, roulette, shall we say? Yeah. So I'm good with it. 
Uh, I think particularly it makes it like for the elite players, I don't have a concern about where they're going to show up. So like, I feel like the first round is probably going to be fairly similar, except for the, you know, Malik Willis type hype that folks get overall. It's pretty consistent. Yeah. And like I said, I, Joel brought up, you know, Malik Willis and we've seen other ones like that where like, man, if you do your draft way too early and you, you were taking Malik Willis and Austin, I imagine you run into that in best ball quite often where there's players that you took early on in the season. We did a super early best ball draft for football guys where I took Darren Waller thinking maybe it was a bounce back year. And now there are heavy reports. My man is retiring. <laughs> I don't know if it's officially <laughs> official yet, but I may have Darren Waller and he may not even be an NFL team when it's all said and done. So, yeah, I think I fortunately avoided that in my, in my pre-draft uh, best ball leagues that I've done so far. So, but yes, it is risky. There was definitely there was a year. Oh, it was the year coming off of the LA Rams Super Bowl win where I thought, oh, Odell Beckham Jr. He'll come back. He'll be fine. Didn't sign with the team like the whole year. Like, yeah, oh. that was that weird one where he just there. He was rumored to so many different teams and did nothing. Austin, I'm gonna have you keep it going. Um, rookie drafts in general, there's always going to be talk about team need versus best available player. And I'm actually gonna combine this question with another question later on in the draft. But when you're looking, is it always just best available? I know I've heard Joel give this advice a lot. So is it always just best available player for you? Or is there a time where you're like, look, I understand there's a good wide receiver there, but I'm also the guy who needs a quarterback. And that's what I'm going to bring up a little bit later in the draft. Is there a time where team need kind of takes over? Yeah, I think it really depends on your situation and why you are drafting in your current in your specific slot. So like for a mock draft, I'm going to go best player available more times than not. But when I'm in an actual league, like let's say I have the 107, and the only reason I didn't win the my league the last year is because all three of my starting receivers got injured. Okay, so what is my biggest need at that point then? Is it quarterback? Is it receiver? Like then then it becomes more team con, con uh, more contextual based on your team because if I just had a bad injury year, but I don't have a ton of roles, holes in my roster. Maybe I just focus on filling the one hole that I have and taking that shot. I think there's still always a value in taking best player available because somebody else might want that player later. Um, but, you know, it to me, I don't have a one size fits all strategy that I take. It just depends on where I'm at. Um, and I will look at team need. Um Mostly because, too, I'm like, this is going to be the easiest time to get these players, right? Yeah. Once once you get past this, it's going to get harder and harder. And I think that you need to end up just going for, like, whatever whatever feels best for your roster at that time. No, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, Joel, I, I've done enough shows with you. You are typically a proponent of get – honestly, get the trade value, if you will, right now. It's best player available every single time. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, yeah, I, I think with drafts, it's kind of the same thing as with, with trades, right? And you brought, like you said, in that at this point in the season, I'm not looking to fill my lineup. You know, I, I want to get the most value. I want to accumulate value and I'll worry about my lineup holes as we get closer to the season. And I know exactly what I'm looking for. Um, the one place I would say where you kind of need to, where you may need to go a specific position is in super flex. And if you don't have a quarterback, then you may need to prioritize quarterback. But in, yeah. in a one QB, I'm almost, almost exclusively going to go for best player available. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, just for, for everybody's note, I am on auto pick, but I have an actual queue of 50 players set up. So they are taking players in the order. I would have taken them anyway. I'm not completely ruining this draft as I did by having it set up as snake and third round reversal because I accidentally copied last week's settings. So um, as I mentioned in the chat for the draft, I could have fixed this probably in the middle of the draft, but the long and short is all we're really focusing on here is ADP and where these players are going. And that's going to be perfect no matter who's picking you're not going to ignore a guy because you took another wide receiver in the previous round that's just not how we're doing this if that is how you're doing it don't do that in your rookie drafts that's not how this works um guys let's take a look at the first round so first round went marvin harrison malik neighbors one and two blake bowers for for austin at the three we'll probably talk a little bit more about that roma duze brian thomas caleb williams going at the six is the first quarterback blake quorum is the first running back at the one seven by my buddy uh, Canton's finest Troy Franklin Xavier worthy Drake may is the second quarterback that wasn't uh, he's listed as an auto pick now so I don't know if that was an auto 
Um, Jordan Brooks or Jalen Brooks, I can't remember his name. I apologize. And Keon Coleman was my pick at the 12. Um, Joel, when you look at this draft, where is the talent drop off in the first round? And what I mean by that is every year, it seems like we know where the drop off is. And I always end up having that pick. That is the next pick after the (laughs) drop off. So I'm always probably the first guy looking to trade out of that pick. Where do you think that is in a one QB league right now? Uh, I think it's after the four. Uh, you get the three big receivers, Harrison, Neighbors, Adunze, and then Bowers, who I, I think there's some landing spots where he wouldn't be great. Uh, but I think most of his landing spots are going to lead him to being a positional advantage. So I, I think the top four is a clear tier. Uh, and then once you get into the second group, I think Brian Thomas is at the top of that tier just because of the kind of the combat, you know, the athleticism he showed at the combine. Uh, I think he's going to get top 20 draft capital. Uh, So I think he's at the top of that next group. Uh, And then it's kind of, yeah, we saw Blake Corum go here. I mean, if that's the guy you want, if you, if you think he's going to end up going to the chargers and kind of be the bell cow for uh, the Greg Roman, Jim Harbaugh offense, that's probably defensible. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think in most drafts, it, at that point, you're just going to see pick your flavor of receiver, whether it's Worthy, whether it's Franklin, whether it's Adonai Mitchell, McConkey, whoever. I think those guys are all going to go in that next group. And then, yeah, whoever whoever you have at the top of that, uh, the wider or the running back group. Is, is Thomas good enough that, and now again, I know you guys are big traders, both of you, Joel, but is Thomas good enough that you're happy if you have the one five, you happen to be there in this pick right now, but in, in a real draft, or is the drop off from the top four to Thomas enough where you're actively like you were shopping that pick? Like I would rather not make this pick. Give me some picks next year. Yeah, that's going to be landing spot dependent. Okay. Um, like if he goes to Buffalo, that wheels up. If he goes to like Indianapolis, if they, you know, if they want to really get aggressive with getting at their riches and weapons, uh, and he's, you know, he gets like a top 15 draft capital. Then I think he's going to hold that value. Uh, if he, if he goes to a spot that's not great, like say Philly, where he's going to be the third wheel uh, between Devonta Smith and AJ Brown, that that's not going to be great. And then I'm going to want to be trading out of that pick and kind of into that top four. Austin, are you, are you looking at it as a top four as well? Or are those the four guys that you're really hoping to walk out of here with, or does anybody else sneak in there for you? Yeah, I think I agree with Joel. I think you could maybe stretch it to a five if you say Caleb Williams like sneaks into that. Um, but like if I'm at the one of five and I'm not getting a trade offer that I really like, I'll probably just take Caleb Williams. Um, but I think one of five is the first tier where I'm like, yeah, let's look at trading back. And then after that, once I get to one of seven, I think at that point I'm definitely like, yep, I want to get out of here if I can. Um, and if I can't, then well, that's kind of the risky play with some of this. Yeah, and that's what it felt like if I remember correctly last year as well. It was the one six one seven where you just wanted to get the hell out of there and hope you could get some picks for this year's draft. So that makes a lot of sense. You, you kind of hit on Caleb Williams, Austin, and that's the next point I wanted to bring up. In a one QB, and you've kind of already said this, it, that's the spot, that's the earliest you're going to look to throw a quarterback out there. None of these other position players. And again, mock drafts are hard because you don't have a roster, but let's assume you, you don't have an enormous QB need. Um, are you still going to go Williams at that one five spot if you don't have an enormous QB need or would you just float with position players at that point? Yeah, I think, are you, and you're saying at the one Oh five. Yeah. You just brought up that if you had the one Oh five earlier, you said you would take Williams, but let's assume I, I'm trying to think of a, a mid tier quarterback, not where you're just flat out elite, but you got two Otaga Vailoa. You have a quarterback who can win you fantasy next year. Are you still taking Williams at the one five or are you going to take Thomas or I, I don't think you're going to go running back that early. Troy Franklin, one of those guys. Yeah, I would go Caleb Williams at that point, just because okay. I think the upside is there. I think he has a rushing ability. He has creativity. He has everything you need. He'd be an upgrade over guys like Tua Tagovailoa, over Kirk Cousins. I think, and I think the, the ceiling for him is a top five quarterback. So if you have one of those bottom half, especially in a 12 team league, if you're in a one quarterback 12 team league and you have a bottom, uh, a, like a back end QB one, taking Caleb Williams with the 105 to, feels totally fine to me. This is again where I care a little bit about my roster because if I, if I have a big hole at receiver, I think then this is a type of draft 
I am going to take as many dart throws at receiver as I can because of the depth of this class. Um, but if I feel set at receiver and I can wait to the second round, then I would probably go Caleb Williams just to take the shot at getting an upgrade. Joel, same question. Um, you're in a, a decent quarterback situation, but nothing perfect. Where is the earliest Caleb Williams falls for you in this draft where you're ready to move on from a position player to go quarterback, even in a one QB? Yeah. If I don't have a top eight, nine kind of guy, say like Kyler up, uh, then I'm going to probably aggressively try to get after Caleb Williams. At, and I would okay. probably take him at one, four, one, five. Um, if I've got, you know, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Jordan Love, you know, that, that second tier of quarterbacks, Kyler, uh, Anthony Richardson, then I'm probably going to, I'm probably thinking I'm, I'm good there and, and I would rather take the position player. Okay. Um, so I might, but how far back are you willing to go? Let's say you have Jordan love, which you probably do on a ton of dynasty teams. I do. Where is the cutoff for you where you are happy with your quarterback situation, but you're not going to let Caleb Williams fall any further. Uh, I think it's probably around say Kyler, Trevor Lawrence. Like okay. if I had Trevor Lawrence. Oh no, I apologize. No, I'm saying in this draft, what pick would you still oh. go Caleb? Yeah. My against the rest of the rookies. I, I would say like probably where he went that one, five, one, six area. Okay. So even if you're happy with quarterback, you're not going to let him get past one, five, one, six. So there is a drop off to the, position yeah, I, I think th just the talent level there. I just like, there's no certainty after that in running back wide receiver. It's, it's pick your flavor. Right. So yep. I think he, and he's a clear tier above the rest of the quarterback. So okay. I think the value there is, is worth taking. And this is why it's good to tell your your people what questions you're going to ask before the show, because Joel led me right into my next question. You say he's a clear tier above the quarterbacks, but in this one QB, and it may have been an auto pick, but if so, Sleeper needs to work on their ADP, and there's going to be a little bit more on that later. Drake May goes four picks later in this single QB in the first round, and then Jaden Daniels goes at the 1-6, so 12 picks after Caleb Williams, with J.J. McCarthy still going in the second round at the 2-11. Joel, how do we feel about all these quarterbacks, four quarterbacks in the first two rounds of a single QB draft? Um, I feel like that's the point where you should be taking flyers at the very least on a lot of these wide receivers before we're taking these quarterbacks. Yeah, so I, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I don't see a path for like Drake May to be in that top, very top yeah. tier of, of dynasty quarterbacks, the Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes tier. So if I'm drafting a QB in a one QB, I want to see, I want that ceiling, right? Otherwise I'm really not interested. So I, I think that Jaden Daniels with his running ability can kind of approximate that. I, I don't think that's really a, a realistic ceiling for him, but he could get close. I just like Drake may, I don't see him ever being better than say Justin Herbert or Trevor Lawrence, that kind of quarterback. Uh, so he he's just not something I'm really going to be interested in, in a one QB. Uh, and, like JJ McCarthy. Yeah. I just, there's some things I like and some things I really don't like. So yeah, I just, I'm not sure I see the ceiling there either. So most of these guys, I'm, I'm just not really interested in, in the one QB. So would you, are, are they, I, I doubt you would say they're off your board, but are they third or even fourth round picks before the talent catches up with it? I, I, I guess if I had, like, if I have a quarterback <laughs> that I'm happy yeah. with, they probably are they're off, off your board. board. Right? I'm, yeah, I'm just okay. not interested in taking a quarterback that I don't think has that ceiling. No, I, I don't want to spend the roster spot on it. I love that because for a lot of folks who play Dynasty and if you play primarily Superflex and you go into a 1QB, you need to be aware that you just may not draft a quarterback and there's nothing wrong with that if it's not Caleb Williams, this once-in-a-generation talent, which is a phrase we're being thrown around a lot in our generation. <laughs> you know, whatever. That's More on that later. Plenty of time to talk about that. Um, Austin, is it the same for you? Let's assume... May, McCarthy, Daniels all go in the first round. I know we can't predict their landing spots, but you can definitely guess that, you know, they're going to end up Washington, New England, things like that early on in the draft. Are you still fine with erasing them off of your board in a one QB? Or once we hit to the fourth round where a lot of people don't even know who these guys are, are you a little bit more comfortable with that? I think, so I think the four of them should go in a four round one QB. I don't think Michael Penix and Bo Nix should be going off the board at all in a one QB league. Like they're, they're not going to be starters day one, most likely. 
I will yeah. be I will be very surprised if they are day one starters. And I would say I feel good about Drake May like early to mid second round, and then I would probably have Jaden Daniels around that same court category. JJ McCarthy, like I feel like he's a third or fourth round flyer to me okay. because I think the way I'm thinking about these these quarterbacks is like McCarthy, he's going to be good from an NFL perspective. I feel like he will be a solid quarterback. He might need to sit a year, but I think he has the potential to, you know, be a game manager. And so maybe he's helpful if your first quarterback, your starting quarterback gets hurt, but I'm not trying too hard to get him. And then with Drake May and Jaden Daniels, I'm like, there are receivers I would rather have over them, but they both uh, are good enough that I, I could see betting on an upside if you're getting to a point where it's like, well, I'm betting on upside with receivers anyways, so why not bet on a quarterback upside? Yeah, I'm going to throw Gator in here. Gator said this is why taxi squads are a must. That way you can kind of like stash some of those quarterbacks later on, maybe even after the draft. Um, I also want to go back. Gator had a comment way earlier when we were talking about draft need. Uh, Dre, uh, Jay had uh, Andrew Cooper on. Draft for value, trade for need was one of the big things on uh, – his very first show. And so I, I think that's some really good advice right there is, is make sure you're thinking about value when you're making these picks. Um, I want to jump to the running backs because this typically is a class that's kind of panned for its running backs, but we saw two work their way into round one. I think uh, Josh said in a previous mock draft, Blake Corum didn't even go in a previous mock draft. Now he's the first running back off the board. I think it's Saying that he doesn't go. That was a weird one. But uh, we have Corum is the first running back off the board. Jonathan Brooks is the second running back. Jalen Wright is the third running back. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Jalen Wright here in a second. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little opportunity to talk here in a wonderful game that I call Keep Trade Cut. These were the first three running backs off the board. Uh, Joel, I'm going to give you time to think about it. I always put Austin on the spot first. So Austin, first three running backs off the board. Keep Trade Cut. And then I want you to throw in after you make your decision. Are they your top three running backs or at least all three of them in your top five? Yeah. So first off, I'm very bummed that you decided to go first three running backs on the board because I was expecting quarterbacks or receivers and I had already <laughs> mentally prepared for that. <laughs> and you threw me I for love that I find a way to get you with this game every single time. <laughs> well, I decided today, like, I'm going to try and predict where Ryan's going to go with this and see how that works. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so keep trade cut, Blake Corum, Jonathan Brooks, Jalen Wright. I'm going to keep Jalen Wright. I'm going to trade Blake Corum and cut Jonathan Brooks. That's just how I feel like their value stacks up. Uh, the thing that's interesting to me about Blake Corum, he didn't have as high of efficiency as Jalen Wright. So that actually matters to me. And Michigan can run the dang ball. Like they, they are a good running team. And he was averaging less than five yards per carry. It's a little bit alarming for me of making the leap. I will also say the thing about running backs to me is it does matter. Landing spot matters so yes. much more to me for them than it does for receiver or quarterbacks. Um, so it, that will, this will probably change after the draft, but as of now, I'd rather have Jalen, Wright. Um, all three of them, I'd say, yeah, are in my top five. Although I think I would put Audric estimate up in my top three and knock Jonathan Brooks out. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and and I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here because you're not quite this far ahead of me as running backs as you'd like to be. Estime had like a terrible combine though, didn't he? Like ran a like terrible forty. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about the combine. Okay, <laughs> he, he had a better pro day. Okay, so he improved everything on the pro day. Okay, yeah, glad, glad to hear it because I know a lot of people were getting super worried about him, Joel, and uh, and and clearly the pro day fixed those. So Joel, the game is keep trade cut. Blake Corum, Jonathan Brooks. Jalen Wright, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about Jalen Wright, but I do want to throw out there, um, or I have you also throw out there, are they are they your top three, or at the very least, are they in your top five? So I, I think there's two guys as prospects that I'm that I'm good with. I don't care about their landing spot. That's Brooks and Wright. Uh, I, okay. I think they're significantly above the rest. The rest are going to be landing spot dependent. So, oh, okay. Uh, like Jonathan Brooks, I really like. I think he is the best prospect in this class, but like the knee injury, the ACL in November is just conjures up Jamison Williams' thoughts. So I'm a little nervous. So I'm going to keep Jalen Wright. I will trade Jonathan Brooks and cut Blake Corn. Okay. So uh, 
pretty well the same answers for all of us. I'm certainly keeping Jalen Wright. And now let's talk a little bit about Jalen Wright, but let's talk a little bit more about Sleeper's ADP because this was the, the note I had for myself. And this is something to keep an eye on. As we get closer, ADP is going to fix itself, especially once landing spots. But I was shocked when I was looking to queue up my players that Jalen Wright is the current RB24 in Sleeper's ADP. Now, clearly Joel likes him. Clearly Austin likes him. And I love him. He is my RB2 in this class, which I know Joel's kind of like, ambiguous right now but i think you'd put him up there you said he's landing spot independent um so i I, it's just interesting to me keep an eye on it if you're one of the very early rookie drafts there could be insane value for jalen Wright right now if if uh sleepers adp doesn't catch up with his actual value because i found that one very very interesting and uh guys honestly that's about everything i wanted to discuss uh rookie drafts are always short drafts i'm taking a look uh, let's run down the second round and i'll ask a question that uh that nobody really likes to answer so uh with my auto pick i went lad mcconkey jalen raya donai mitchell uh xavier legit jatavian sanders Jaden daniels i think it's jermaine burton jalen polk I'm really testing myself here fence and i have no idea <laughs> audrick estime jj mccarthy and i think it's Devontae walker um joel looking at these is there anybody other than the two quarterbacks because i know you were pretty like you would take them off your board is there anybody who just should not be going this early let's talk specifically about the tight end because there's a lot of discussion over who the second tight end behind bowers is very much like the quarterback is jatavian sanders the clear cut two and should he be going at the two five in a draft uh yes he is the clear cut two if it's not tight end premium, then no, he shouldn't be going this early, right? He's just okay. not, he's not an elite prospect. Uh, so yeah, I, I would have, I'd rather be taking the, the receivers and the running backs ahead of him. So I, I just don't see that kind of elite ceiling that he would need to be a difference maker at the tight end position. All right, perfect. Uh, Austin, same question. Is there anybody who you see in round two other than the quarterbacks who just doesn't belong there? Um, No, I mean, I think that I would put, I would put Adonai Mitchell, well, I think Adonai Mitchell does not belong in the second round because I think he belongs in the first round. Like I would rather Ooh, have him over a couple going the of other these way guys. With it. <laughs> like I think that he, I mean, he was the number one. I know people are very excited about Xavier Worthy right now because he's fast as hell. I don't care about his 40 yard dash. I care about his playing speed and Worthy's playing speed is really good. I don't like, I don't want to say that he can't run fast when he's running routes because he can, but the 40 yard dash is not everything. And I think Adonai Mitchell has a skill set that is getting overlooked because the other Texas receiver just ran up 412 or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. It, you sometimes get overshadowed by teammates. And and I don't know. I've heard I've heard interesting comps for AD Mitchell. And so it's going to be interesting to see where he lands and, and how everything's going to shake out there. Uh Austin, go ahead and get us started. Let me get your draft up on the screen here. Was there anybody you were pleasantly pleasantly surprised is is brock bowers your three was this an experiment or are you have him ahead of roma dunze because i think that one's a little bit uh up in the air depending on team need yeah i think this one is just up in the air and i i decided the tiebreaker was positional advantage and positional value and deciding to take the the premium at tight end over Adunze, I I want to dig in a little bit more into comparing them directly one to one because I think you could go either way. Like Adunze is clearly the wide receiver three in this class, and so it's kind of to me this pick is about: Do you want the 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 premium at the tight end position, or do you want another elite receiver? Um, outside of that, I was a little bit surprised that Audric Estime fell as far as he did which maybe that is because people are down on him after his combine, but I think he had the efficiency in college that he's good. Uh, I know Bucky Irving is someone that a lot of the the draft uh, prospect draft scouts have enjoyed. And so third round, take a dart throw on a running back. I, I kind of like these like third, fourth round running backs in a rookie startup because that's where you can get like random guys like your Ty Chandlers, like your Kyron Williams that all of a sudden like they get a chance. And so it's you can find some value there. And at that point, like I don't care about the difference between the 310 and the 311. You're taking dart throws anyway. So like why not? Um and then with the last pick just take a take a shot at wide receiver. I was gonna and say I've never heard of Theo Weiss, but it looks like he's named after me. So now he's my favorite player in the draft. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's check his measurables, uh, six, two, one ninety two. If he is a little bit taller, he could be my favorite player, but, uh, I, again, not someone I'm very familiar with, but, 
hey, like you said, it's the last round. Um, Joel, let's pop over to your team at the one five wide receivers for our zero running back drafter. What do you know? No surprise based on the fact that you said you would take the quarterbacks off your board and you're a zero running back guy. But uh, the, the rookie wide receiver value just fell to you. It looks like you got Johnny Wilson in the fourth, who because of his measurables is one of my favorite players in the draft because I love tall wide receivers. But Joel, go ahead and talk about it. Yeah, so this is basically like how I typically build my teams and that I, you know, I go after uh, the scarce positions first, which are quarterback and tight end and, and I'm a zero RB guy. So I probably have like a bunch of zero RB guys anyway. So I'm probably not you know, like yeah, actively fair. shooting for uh, the guys. I think they're going to be zero RB guys because I probably got a bunch of those anyway. So, I mean, Austin is completely correct that these are the guys that you want to be picking up uh, in a rookie draft, but I probably got a bunch of them anyway. So I probably don't need him. So I'm, I'm shooting for upside at receiver uh, Thomas. Like we said, if, if he hits the right landing spot, like Buffalo or something like that could be like a top 24 receiver uh, as a rookie, he's got that, kind of deep threat ability. He's going to get those high efficiency touches. I mean, I don't think he's going to be a volume guy, but he's going to be uh, very high. He's going to get a lot of very high value touches. Uh, Jalen Polk, I like all the Washington receivers, uh, McMillan, Polk, uh, obviously Adunze. Uh, I think they're all going to play on Sundays. Uh, I I think Polk is, I've I've kind of made this comparison before, and and I want to say he's Devontae Adams, but he's stylistically similar to Devontae Adams in that he's uh, really good. He's got really good footwork gets really good breaks off the line uh, and really good route runner, even though he's not a superior athlete, but so a, a stylistically similar player. Corley, again, you've heard the Debo comps, uh, very similar size player, very, almost identical athletically to uh, where Debo was coming out of South Carolina as a rookie. So he's kind of got that upside yeah. in the third round. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking that shot all day. Uh, Again, going to be landing spot dependent, but at this point, they all are, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you mentioned Johnny Wilson. Uh, I think he's a guy who could, he's six seven. He could play wide receiver. He could be like a wide receiver tight end hybrid combo yeah. at the next level. A guy who had a much better season in 22 than 23. So, like, if, if there's a reason for that, if that's, you know, Keon Coleman coming in, I mean, Keon wasn't like a target vulture or anything like that, but you know, they may have kind of switched the offense. So like, if you can kind of do your homework and kind of find out why he dropped off, like that 22 season was really good. He would have been a, a much higher rated prospect. Uh, so I think there's that, uh, you know, that kind of upside there that I, I want to take a shot on in the fourth. Yeah. Uh, looking at my draft again, I had this set up for my queue. Um, I do want to point out Gator Raiders took Jalen Wright at the two, two, I would have taken him at the two, one. And remember I have this draft just completely messed up. Um, Keon Coleman's a guy I like at one point was my wide receiver four in the draft. I bumped him down to wide receiver five. Um, obviously didn't run in a great 40, but he's tall. I like six foot four wide receivers. It's going to be landing spot dependent, but right now I'm big on Keon Coleman and McConkie feels like a guy who's going to be able to play the slot really well in the NFL. This guy in PPR formats. I'm really excited about Marshawn Lloyd has been all over my draft board when it comes to running backs. Um, at one point, I think when I first started ranking them, just looking at production and comps and all that, I had him at one. I think he's fallen down to or at this point, if I remember correctly, and Malik Washington, again, I'm taking wide receivers at the end of my draft, except I did get sniped here. Matt DeVito with Theo Johnson. I am in love with Theo Johnson. So Joel, I want, I want to have you talk about Theo Johnson, if you can, just a little bit to end this show, because I keep watching drafts where he is not going in this draft. He's the last tight end. Again, this guy, the, what is it? The relative athletic score scored like a 9.99. His cop is Jimmy Graham. And Joel, if anybody knows me, big Jimmy Graham guy when it comes to fantasy football. So I don't see me leaving many drafts without Theo Johnson, though. I did get sniped in this. one. Yeah. So I made this point uh, before. I I think there's further upside in Theo Johnson just because like he came, he he went to high school in Canada, right? He was not recruited. He had to go to a tryout at Penn state. So, you know, he's, I think there's further develop. The athletic score is superior. I I think you put up like a 10, like you said, which is crazy. Uh, and his, like, his on-field production is, there's some good things, there's some bad things. Uh, but I think there's real, like, real upside there just because, you know, his his best football should be out of him, right? He, he only started getting, like, real coaching at Penn State. Uh, so I, I think there's, like, a real potential for development there. I love it. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I want to hear, especially if he ends up on a bunch of my teams. Uh, 
just want to make sure he ends up on a bunch of my teams. So I, I just hope I don't have to start taking him in the third. I was really enjoying grabbing him in the fourth, but now with other people catching on, I'm not not loving that a whole lot. Um, oops of the draft, I am going to give just because we talked about it a little bit. Um, Drake May is not a first round pick in a in a one quarterback draft, and in my opinion, with the rushing upside, he shouldn't be ahead of Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels at 2-6 feels right, and then Drake May should slide in after that somewhere. That's just my personal opinion. I think that's the oops, oops of the draft. Uh, Joel, you had mentioned setting up your queue at the beginning to see if there were any high-priority like free agents that that you're a little shocked didn't go in this draft. Did you get a chance to do that? I, if you didn't, I my queue is still here, and I have a few names I wanted to throw back. Yeah, uh, there's nobody I'm really shocked didn't go. Um, there's some guys I like. Uh, I, I love Dylan Johnson as a college player, but he had a terrible combine. So I, I don't think he's going to get any kind of solid draft capital. He would be like, we were talking about before, just uh, like a zero RB flyer. Uh, the one guy under the radar guy I kind of like is Jordan Whittington, uh, the receiver from Texas, who just kind of got overshadowed by uh, Worthy and A.D. Mitchell and Jonathan Brooks and Jatavian Sanders, right? He's just in an offense with a bunch of uh, just really superior prospects. So um, I, I think that's a guy – kind of just going under the radar who could kind of like Roshan Johnson was last year, right? Just same, same situation where he was playing behind B. John Robinson. Uh, I think he's a guy who could get some, get some kind of buzz just because there were like really superior players in front of him. And he just didn't really get a real chance in college. Austin, anybody for you? Uh, yeah, I did not get a chance to set my cue. Okay. That's fine. I don't have anything. Um, Two names I want or three names I want to throw out real quick. And, and Joel, I'm going to have you answer first because you're the more the rookie guy. Jalen Coker coming out of Holy Cross, six foot three, 213 pounds, not drafted in this 48 player pick, but he's a, a wide receiver who people smarter than me I've heard mention as a, as a decent prospect. Am I overthinking this a little bit here? Uh, he's a decent prospect. I like, I would take like Malik Washington, like you took, I would take him way ahead. So, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure. Javon Baker, I would have way ahead of him. So if you look at the receivers okay. who went uh, at the back end of this draft, I would have them all ahead of him. So yeah, as a priority like free agent guy that you're going to pick up off of waivers, that's cool. But I, I don't think he should be drafted ahead of any of, the, any of these guys that went. Uh, big combine guy, Isaac Garendo at running back. If I'm looking at running back, he did not go in this draft. And I understand he's still falling pretty low because he put himself on the radar at the combine. Is this someone in the top 48 if you're running back needy who should be going? Yeah, I, I guess I'm familiar with him because I'm a Badger fan. He uh, transferred out of Wisconsin uh, okay. just because he knew he wasn't going to be able to play behind uh, Braylon Allen and you know kind of the guys they had there. Uh, went to Louisville, had an okay season. Uh, his on-field production didn't match what he did at the Combine, but um, th there's going to be teams that kind of latch on to that athleticism and want to bring him in and kind of develop him. And, uh, so he's going to get drafted. Uh Again, he'll be uh, he's going to get a shot. So if you're looking for a, a zero RB kind of flyer guy to put on your roster, he's definitely worth drafting. And then a name that everybody's familiar with, Joel, Luke McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey's younger brother. Is this someone who should be getting added in the top 50? I'm going to say no. Uh, again, I, the guys who went in this draft, Washington, Baker, Wilson, uh, thrash we i would have all those guys ahead of him so again if you want to take a shot on him and your waivers that's that's cool but i don't think he should be drafted in a four round perfect uh and that's kind of the reason i like to bring these up austin did these shows a lot with me last year i like to bring up for someone like me who trades all their draft picks away i need to have rookies who i can go and add to my taxi squad at the end and so i always like to bring up the guys who weren't drafted uh austin obviously i kind of let joel finish the show up there anything that you didn't get a chance to talk about during this draft that you'd like to bring up before we get out of here I mean, we're going to have many weeks to talk about this. We are going to have a lot of weeks to talk about this. I cannot so. wait to challenge you on your Drake May hate. I, I, I say, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get a lot of it. I will say, people smarter than me, yourself included, have really been talking me up on Drake May. And this is the week on Club Fantasy where I get to learn a little bit more about Drake May. So hopefully it'll work out. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm going to let these guys outro here in a second. But I'm going to quickly throw in, if you're watching us on Twitter right now or X or whatever the hell you want to call it, we very much appreciate you. You can just click the link and go over to YouTube and just hit subscribe. We're trying to work our way to a thousand subscribers. We'd love if you guys could help us there, help us get there before the season. 
just pop over to YouTube, hit subscribe. We'd very much appreciate it. Joel, tell everybody where they can find you, what you're working on. Uh, you know, I know you got that draft going. I don't know if you dropped the link in the chat. It said you were about to drop it, and then I don't think it ever. Yeah, I put it in the chat. So, um, yeah, uh, tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, same time, uh, the Dynasty After Party with myself and Michael Sicoli. Uh, we're going to be doing a Superflex rookie mock. And then, like I said, we're going to be doing another one right after the draft to see how the draft capital directly affected uh, the individual players. So, yeah, we're doing it for science. This is our control group. Uh, so you can find us there every morning, uh, every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. I was going to say, Club Fantasy all of a sudden has all this Dynasty content. Normally, I was the only Dynasty content. Joel, people are saying the link did not make it into the chat. So I don't know if you want to try to drop it in there one more time. Um, okay. But – I used to be the only dynasty content with these mock draft shows, me and Austin. Now, Austin, everybody's doing the dynasty content. I almost feel like we're, we're waiting in waters we don't belong in. But, hey, sometimes you want to hear it from people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and that's where me and Austin come in. So we'll be much better in about a month. Austin, you got anything going on right now? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Austin underscore FFO and be on the lookout for any of my Carolina Panthers coverage. With? Last word on sports. <laughs> I was gonna, come on, Austin. <laughs> Guys, you get two chances to mock draft with us every single week. This show is going to be every Saturday at 11 for the next couple months, weeks. It's going to be a lot of dynasty focus. I think we're jumping right back into a startup draft next week. I'll have fun settings. I'll even actually make sure the settings that I say translate to the draft next week so we don't have the banana stuff that's going on in this week's draft. Um, but we're going to do rookies. Just like Joel said, we do rookie drafts two weeks before the NFL draft and then two weeks after the NFL draft, super flex, non super flex, just to see how things change. But then every Monday... It's now Chris and Gator J who are doing Mocking with the Stars. Jay, if you want to drop your guest into the chat, I forgot to ask you before the show who it's going to be. But every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern, we have a second Mock Draft show for Mock Draft Monday, and that's hosted by Chris and Gator J. So make sure you're checking that one out. And if you're not a part of our Mock Draft group so you can get the invites to draft with us, go check Jay's Twitter feed right now because he actually just put the link of how you guys can get invited to that. Every Wednesday, we go live with No Pun Intended. That's our flagship show. This week, we are starting our Stars of Tomorrow series. We're going to be talking incoming rookie quarterbacks with Chrissy Freud from A to Z Sports. She was our uh, rookie quarterback guest last year. Absolutely killed it. We can't wait to do it again. As Joel mentioned, every Sunday is the Dynasty After Party with Joel and Michael Sicoli. Basically, you have every reason to sub to our YouTube, which is something I've pointed out multiple, multiple times now. So just go ahead and do that so that you never miss an episode. For Austin and Joel, I'm Ryan. You can follow Club Fantasy at Club Fantasy. FFL. It's clubfantasyffl.com. Always remember, defense wins championships, offense wins fantasy football, and practice makes perfect. We will see you at the next mock.